Hello, I'm on this side of the camera. Uh, this is uh, Daisy O'Connell uh, for Showbiz Scandal. Well, a very good early evening to each and every one of you. Welcome to this early evening show of uh, Showbiz Scandal with me, Ms. Belinda Scandal. Uh, we've just been watching Joe's, everybody. It's a sensational, wonderful, fabulous show. Joe McKellar is absolutely sensational, and the cast are absolutely amazing. Chorus person of the week goes to Joseph Peacock. A little thing, he's about that big, everybody. I seem to be interviewing a lot of little people today. I don't know what's going on. He's, he's right down there. I think, well, at least he will be. Anyway, so. Uh, what does today's show get? Today's show gets a whole five out of five scandal stars. Thoroughly heartwarmingly enjoyable. Great performances, great um, scenery, just everything about it is wonderful. Um, five stars. It's a gorgeous, beautiful theatre. We're going to be able to find out what his friends and his fans all think about Mr. Matt Lucas as he's in conversation here tonight. So stick around. Shabba. <laughs> so here we are. Have you had a lovely, tiresome day? I've had a lovely day. I've got, hello. Hi. Are you filming? Yeah. I've been, we started off in Liverpool mm -hmm. for a signing and then we went to Manchester and then we came here to Stockport and everywhere we went we just about got there on time or we were a bit late so we've sort of been running around all day but it's been lovely to come up north and meet people and I've worked hard writing this book and um, it's been very nice to do these Q&A's and meet people, yeah lovely. And do you have a favourite character that you've done? Favourite character that I've done, do you know one of my favourites was Marjorie Dawes, mm -hmm. do you know Marjorie Dawes yeah. with the fat fire to dust? Anybody? No? I like doing that one, because she says things I would never dare even think. No. Is that why you put them into the script yourself? Well, yes and no. Well, me and Walliams did it together, yeah. 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 Great idea. So who thought you could make a living out of um, wearing wigs? I know, who'd have thought it, eh? But it's possible, isn't it? It's feasible, isn't it? We've managed it, we've pulled it off. Yeah. It's a lovely, lovely evening. That was everybody speaking to Mr. Matt Lucas. Absolutely sensational. Read the book. Buy it now. It's a great Christmas present. Yes, today we are here for the launch of Dick Whittington, this year's Manchester Extravaganza Pantomime, starring the one and only John Barrowman and of course the Crankies. And if that's not enough, we've also been going to be treated to a 4D show and, let's face it, the one thing we love over Christmas is getting a bit of dick. So happiness all round. Shabba! Here we are with the Crankies, everybody. Not that you recognise this lady because you look ever so different in disguise, don't you? Well, I hope so. Hey, and you've been at it for so many years now. What's yeah. the secret? Oh, I don't know really. Uh, I think I think it's enjoying your work yeah. and not having too much of it. When yeah. you get when you get a bit older, you think oh, I'm not doing that one. I'm not doing that. You we know? stopped touring about ten years ago. Yeah, we, we, we two and a half round kits with killers. Yeah, really. I think the last tours we did was the Haven tours, you yeah. know, and and they were the, the, it's, it's the traffic now. I don't know how people can tour anymore. You can't get anywhere, no, can you? No. no. You used to do. Uh, Starting one night and you do Devon Cliffs oh, the next right. day. Yeah. You could never do that now. No. You need two days to get it. Yeah, you would, wouldn't you? <laughs> 
it's, the, the kudos seems to be getting bigger and bigger and bigger every year. What do you think its secret is? Well, I don't know. We've just got all these new shows with Ambassador Theatre Group, of which obviously Manchester is is one of the dates. Um, I think we've just tried to make pantomime a bit more relevant. I mean, you know, they're not modern pantomimes. They're not pantomimes that stray away from anything. We're definitely not politically correct. Um, but we've just tried to make them more like musicals and spectacular and, and funny. You know, I think people want to come and have a laugh. And that's that's why I love using people like Ian and Jeanette because they just bring so much to the table. 50 years experience in front of a Manchester crowd I think goes a long way. And how important do you think variety within Panto is these days? Well, I mean all of my pantomimes are essentially variety shows. Mm -hmm. I mean if you look hard enough you will see a story, right. you, you, will, you, will see, you will see a bit of a plot but um, it's essentially a big variety show so you've got big musical production numbers, you've got sketches in the form of, of haunted bedrooms, um, you've got the crankies doing their thing, um, and then you've got the big wow moments with the special effects. But pantomime and variety, they're, they're, they're like that, they're so close together anyway. Um, and, and mine always have a bit more variety in them than others. And Kudos above, overall, above all other pantomime companies seems to use music a lot more and, and proper Big music, not like you, you don't seem to think that you're ever listening to a Casio keyboard when you go to a QDOS show. No, we, we take a lot of time to make sure that the orchestration is big and it's full and um, you know it's quite anthemic um, because I think that's what you want. I want to sit in a pantomime and I want to start, and you want the hairs on the back of your neck to. We all want to be sitting. 30 years ago at Sunday night, the London Palladium. That's what we all really want, and that's the feeling I think you get from one of our shows. But you're here now, I'm here now. in Manchester, yeah. and you, you originally know lots of people from Manchester uh, in the side yeah. of Manchester. Yeah. Well, Jeanette, we, before we started with the uh, other girl partner. Yeah, and we were we called the Cranky Kids. Where did you used to live then? Was it Presswick? Then? Presswick, the, the, uh, Rose, Rosie's guest house. Right. And your wee suitcases, you used yeah. to get a bus and the dad and we, to we take used, you home. We used to get, a, and we had little boot cases, and we used to go around these clubs. Clubs, oh. And we, we'd sometimes we working with strippers. This stripper came in, Margaret and I are in the corner. We just come from the five past eight show in Edinburgh, and we're sitting in the corner. All oh, these strippers come in, and this one went, "Can I borrow your lipstick, love?" And I went, "Yeah." She lifted up her jumper and went like that. Oh, today it's <laughs> cold out tonight. And Margaret and I were sitting going. <laughs> And your, your particular duo, it's so fast paced, isn't it? Yeah. 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 Is it a lot of new stuff? Do you put new stuff in or you, is it like going into like a Rolodex? Yeah, well, well we, haven't, we haven't been on the stage at all this year. Oh, right. We haven't, we haven't been on a stage since last January. This is the first time we've been on a stage. Today. So, what do you do with your downtime then? What is relaxing for the pair of you? Well, well we, we, we. We go to Australia for three months a year. Yeah, right. yeah we've, got we've got a place, place there. there. We cycle. We golf, swim. And when, we're when we're there. When we're there. Yeah. And then, we've and come then back. we come back and we live in Torquay in the summer. And we don't really do much in the summer while the school holidays are on. We just, it's a nice place to live without doing anything really. We do odd gigs if they come in. Like we, when, funny enough, we're inclined because now for when a theatre's 100 years old, they get us to come in. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's right. <laughs> you like, remember it was only half that age. Right. The last one we did was Bradford and Michael Ball was on as well. And, uh, and he says, he says, we'll keep meeting in these shows he said because I get asked to do them as well you know when they, when they yeah. get the old farts they'll do it <laughs> yeah, there was, there's always Joe Pasquale Michael Ball and us oh, why not why not so energy wise you don't stop within the show really do you no 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 it's a it's a quite a heavy show for us this yeah. one uh, and, and I also do routines with the dancers as well yes and we've seen some of them on YouTube as well, well John, throws, uh, you about as John well. throws me a boot as well as, as well as Ian throwing me a bit but um, this year I'm, I'm going to be Madonna again because I did Madonna last year, so, um, so yeah. and it's, I, I do it in the Sultan's Palace. So where do you get your energy from then? Because you're just sometimes doing two or three shows uh, a week. Yeah, yeah, we, well, well, we've got 12 shows a week, so when we do panto, the first week's the worst because your body's not used to it, uh -huh. but then then you get used to it, well, you know yourself, you get used to what you do, and then it's all, it's all right, and then when you finish, uh, you're, you're at a loose end, really, because mm -hmm. you think, Why did, how can I not do anything, yeah. you know? But, but that's when we go to Australia. Yeah. We have other real life there. <laughs> the role of the Panto Dame seems to have changed an awful lot over the last few years as well. Yeah, dames, I mean, dames are changing. I mean, it's kind of, you know, the traditional man in a, in a frock has... It's, it's moving away. I mean, actually, we don't have a dame in this show because of the nature of the Crankies and, and John. 
nobody get the dame doesn't get a look in no um but i was kind of about five years ago i kind of promoted the role of the dame in other shows um you know and, and i'm you know one of my great uh, heroes was Danny LaRue and I knew Danny towards the end of his life so I'm all for I'm all for uh, glamorous dames you know but I also loved Les Dawson so you can have you can have a short man in a in a frock who doesn't wear much makeup and throws a wig on but you can have somebody who's very glamorous where every entrance is a wow it's really important but I do think the important thing to say about our shows and certainly this show it's not an adult panto by any stretch of the imagination but it's not a kiddie show either it really is something that every generation can come and enjoy you know the way you can sit and watch the simpsons and kids just see a cartoon with lots of yellow faces and then the adults watch it on a completely different level you should watch one of our shows like that you know you should watch john barrowman and the crankies doing a haunted bedroom scene and the kids just think it's very funny and the adults can see that there's something completely different going on so it literally is a show for everybody. It is a show for everybody.